where we begin is with a larger than life chart. <laughs> we are admittedly a little chart and graph crazy around here. And tonight is a night where we've just decided to stop fighting it and give in. We have Kent Jones standing by at our big, uh, sort of interactive, magical chart wall. Hi, Kent. You Hello. Look great. You look great. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> sort of interactive is the important part here. Uh, the reason we had to call in Kent and the big chart wall uh, is because today was one of those where is the country headed days. Uh, one of those are we crawling out of the Great Recession or not days. Today, President Obama and the White House hailed the release of the latest round of job numbers. And that's not ordinarily the most exciting thing in the world. But there, there was really good reason to take note today. And I've often had to report bad news during the course of this year as the recession wrecked havoc on people's lives. But today is an encouraging day. We learned that the economy actually produced a substantial number of jobs instead of losing a substantial number of jobs. We are beginning to turn the corner. We are beginning to turn the corner. The new jobs numbers out today revealed that last month, the month of March, was the single best month for jobs in the last three years. Instead of hemorrhaging jobs at a breakneck rate, the U.S. economy is now beginning to create jobs, a significant number of them. To understand where we are right now, you've got to put that in context. And for that, we have enlisted the help of Kent uh, tonight, playing the part of Vanna White. Uh, what you're looking at over there with Kent on the big wall right now is a giant graph. It shows job losses during the final year of the Bush administration, during 2008. Now, as you can see there, each month of 2008 was pretty much worse than the last. In September of 2008, when the meltdown was in full effect, the U.S. economy lost about 450,000 jobs. Then in October, another 550,000 jobs. Then in November, another 730,000 jobs. During President Bush's final month in office, January of 2009, the U.S. economy lost a pretty staggering 779,000 jobs. One month, 779,000 jobs lost. That's what the current president was handed when he came into office, essentially free fall. What happened next? Okay, Kent, now you have to cue the Vanna White skills, big uh. time. Ready? Uh, February 2009, another pretty bad month uh, for jobs, more than 720,000 lost. March, same deal, uh, another 750,000 jobs gone. Okay, now watch what happens. In April of 2009, the job losses begin to taper off. In May, the news gets a little better. The fewest number of jobs lost in nine months. June, that trend reverses a bit, about 500,000 jobs lost that month. Then July hits, and we're going in the right direction here. 346,000 jobs lost that month. August, about 200,000 jobs lost. September and October, about the same. And, all right, this is what we've been calling the bikini graph. Because although I profess to not being able to see it, the staff of The Rachel Maddow Show insists to me that when much of America looks at this graph, what they see is um, <laughs> a bikini bottom, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I know it's weird, but um, Steve Bennon at WashingtonMonthly.com was the first one to start graphing the job loss numbers like this, the first Friday of each month. And we kept talking at staff meetings about the Steve Bennon first Friday of the month job loss numbers. And nobody grokked their significance at all because nobody could remember that. But when we started talking about the bikini graph, well, whoa, let's do this on every show. So, um, all right, bikini, yeah, thank you. All right, so back to the numbers. So, so something pretty notable happens in uh, November of last year. Kent, can you put that up there? There yeah. we go. For the first time in 23 months, almost two years, the economy gains jobs, 64,000 jobs. Uh, December ends up being another dip, about 100,000 jobs lost. But then in January of this year, January 2010, the economy gains again. It gains another 14,000 jobs. Uh, those jobs ultimately lost again in February, uh, which brings us to the news today. Uh, the latest job numbers for um, the month of March. And at this point, Kent, I'm going to have to take it from here. I'm sorry because this is very exciting. This is the part that I get to do. Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. 
In the month of March, 162,000 jobs were added to the U.S. economy. That's the way that I interact with the map. Uh, that marks the biggest one-month increase in jobs in three years. Now look, the economy clearly still struggling. We still got a long way to go to make up for all of the jobs that were lost over the last two years. But when you look at where we were, when you look at the left hip of the bikini graph, when you realize we were losing about 700,000 jobs each month, this is a step in the right direction, right? The tough measures that we took, measures that were necessary, even though sometimes they were unpopular, have broken this slide and are helping us to climb out of this recession. But we've now added an average of more than 50,000 jobs each month over the first quarter of this year. And this month's increase of 162,000 jobs was the best news we've seen on the job front in more than two years. Left, right, or center, you've got to admit this is good news, right? See the numbers turn around like this? Oh, no, of course you don't have to admit that. Less than five minutes after the jobs numbers were released today, less than five minutes after they came out, the number two Republican in the House, Eric Cantor, released a statement that said, quote, Americans deserve far more than the up and down roller coaster like unemployment reports of the past few months. Dude, have you seen the bikini graph? I mean, it's... Uh, the roller coaster is, is sort of heading in a, a positive direction. If you think of the big pic, right towards the right hip and beyond, I mean, it's, it's like a bikini with a garnish at this point. This may not help Republicans, uh, you know, get elected if they're counting on voter anger about the direction of the economy. But you got to admit, the way things are going is good news about the country. House Minority Leader John Boehner offered a similar reaction to Eric Cantor. What he said was, a near 10% unemployment rate is completely unacceptable. America's employers are taking a pummeling from Washington Democrats' job-killing agenda. You know, as opposed to the Bush administration's job-creating agenda, right? Which shed more than 3.6 million jobs in 2008. The number of jobs created or lost each month is an empirical thing. It's a knowable fact. And when you look at the trend of what's happened in this country over the last year when it comes to jobs, it is pretty hard to come to a conclusion other than things are getting slightly better. It is a slow process to be sure and an unsteady one, but things are getting better. That's just a fact. And it's something that every American should be encouraged by. Everyone, even the ones running for office. Joining us now is Ezra Klein, staff writer for The Washington Post. Mr. Klein, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Good evening. Um, clearly, uh, we here at the show love the bikini graph too much. Um, I, I don't see it. <laughs> you don't see the bikini part? I, I don't see the bikini part. I, I, I've looked at this graph many times. I've been trying to figure out all day. I, I don't see the bikini. Yeah, I don't see it either. I'm with you. All right. <laughs> um, the, unemployment, the unemployment rate. John Boehner is right when he says the unemployment rate is unacceptable. It still absolutely stinks. But... In the, big, in the big picture, in terms of what we can say about jobs in this country, we are getting good news, aren't we? Absolutely. I mean, look, it's 162,000 jobs that they created. And one point on the unemployment rate, the unemployment rate may actually go up a bit in the next couple of months. The way we calculate that are people who are seeking jobs and can't find them. And what happens in a long recession, and we have had a long recession now, is that people stop. They get discouraged. They've been turned down from two dozen applications, and they just stop. When they come back in, when they say, oh, my neighbor just got a job, maybe it's time to look again, they go into the unemployment rate where they had been erased from it before. So it's very common that you'll have very, very good job growth. And you actually have the unemployment rate tick up because people are getting optimistic enough to rejoin the economy after essentially sitting it out in discouragement. In terms of the best ways to watch how we come out of the recession and how we recover, obviously economic growth is one of the big gross measures. Uh, job creation and job loss is one of, the big, one of the big gross measures. What else do you watch in terms of figuring out whether or not the economy is actually going in the right direction? Well, actually, the size, the size of the, of not the unemployment rate, but what is called sort of the labor force. It's how big the labor force is, and it tends to show you, how, you know, whether or not people think this is a good enough economy they can actually get a job. The other big ones are consumer sentiment, whether or not consumers essentially think this is a good uh, economy to buy in. So there are a lot of different measures that sort of across the board. You can look at the stock market, though I think that's disconnected from, from Main Street now in a way that, that begins to get a little bit uh, worrisome. But one thing that I think we, we should make clear is that the 
issue of how good the economy is doing is not a Washington issue. It's, it's not something you can message around really easily. Democrats can't tell you the economy is good if you got 10 percent unemployment come November, and Republicans can't tell you it's it's really bad if your neighbors are getting a job and and you're seeing the you're seeing the unemployment numbers go down. So this one's really going to be won out based on how good the economy is for Americans come November. It's not going to be about Eric Cantor's press releases, no matter how much his message guys would like to make it so. And it, it, is, it is common wisdom, and it's one piece of common wisdom that I agree with, that the most important thing that's going to drive the, uh, the election in November, or, or any election, is the unemployment rate, how people are feeling about the economy at that time. Democrats definitely know that. It's not something that's a foreign concept to people in Washington. As the governing right. party with big majorities right now, what are the Democrats going to try to do between now and November to keep being seen to be making progress on the, on the economy and on